Well, thank you for joining. My name is Edwin Robledo. I'm part of the Autodesk support team, and I specialize in Eagle. And today's webinar is about getting started. And, and today it's part one was we're going to be doing because we're going to only be covering mainly the schematic editor. I really want to break that down. So when you launch Eagle for the very first time, you have the capability of using Eagle on Windows, Linux, or on a Mac as well. The installation process is very similar. It's pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. You just double click it on the downloaded file. And if you're on Linux, it should just automatically use whatever compress application that you have set up by default, it will go ahead and install. For our Mac guys, we, you just have to drag into the applications folder as it comes up on the screen. And for our Windows friends, you just double click on the executable and the installation. Now you will need an Autodesk account to be able to use Eagle, even if it's on free mode. So when you visit at autodesk.com, you just, could just create an account, which basically in essence means you only need an email address and a password, that's all it takes. Now, when you launch Eagle, it's going to ask you to log in, and you log in using those credentials. If you already purchased a subscription, it will automatically load that subscription that is on as part of your entitlements. Okay, so you don't. It's not a, a special different download. It's not a different download. Uh, you don't have a file. You don't need to get a license file or anything like that. Once you log into Eagle, it will use whatever is based on your entitlement. Students can actually get register for Eagle, get the premium version for free. So you're more than welcome to go through those steps, uh, which is um, available on autodesk.com. Okay. Now, let me just go ahead and end the poll. And when it comes to geographically, apparently the, the majority of those that are joining us are from the US. Okay, excellent. I'm just going to go ahead and end the poll. That way we could begin our. Um, our presentation. Okay. Now, once you start Eagle using Eagle, um, you will always land on the home page. You'll notice that we have two tabs here. One for says home and preview right here on top. The home page is the first one that should show up. The majority of you already have seen this page, and you'll see that you have the webinars that we have right here. Always end up here. Now, these webinars are being fed from our website, from our learning center that we have. We will always have the latest videos that we have created specializing on uh, specifying the new features that were added to this particular version. We currently have a pretty aggressive cadence of updates. So always take a quick look at these videos because it lets you know what are the latest features that have been added to optimize your design time as well. And our team actually also adds our quick tips uh, as well right here. Now, once you load Autodesk Eagle, into your program, you always open up to the control panel. And this is the control panel. You'll notice that the control panel consists of multiple sections here on the left-hand side. You have your libraries, you have your design blocks and your design rules. I'm only gonna point out some of them that are I feel that are really important. I'm gonna expand the library tree. The library is actually divided in two sections, libraries and managed libraries. This section here, libraries, is actually the, the portion of these are libraries that I currently have installed on my computer. They're installed, they're local libraries. These are libraries that I have on my computer, okay? So these are not on the cloud. These are on my local computer. Those are these libraries that are here. Now, where are these libraries being stored? If I click on options and I go to directories, you'll see that this is the path where my these libraries are actually located right here, okay? Now the managed libraries are libraries in which were installed with Eagle. And these are all of our default libraries that you see here. These are the default libraries that come with Eagle. And I also have personally some few managed libraries that I've created myself. Now you may ask what's the difference between my local library and my managed library. My managed library is synchronized with the cloud and when I synchronize my libraries with the cloud, or library.io, now I could access my libraries remotely from other computers when I log in with my account information. It also extends the capability of your own library, when it's a managed library, to be able to map 3D models to those components. That's the difference between a local library and a managed library. Local libraries cannot be accessed remotely, and I cannot assign 3D models to that. I could only do that to, 
to manage libraries. And that's what you have here. So these are my managed libraries that I've created. And these are the default libraries that actually come with Eagle. Now we have many friends and um, distributors that are actually sharing libraries and um, have made it available to our users through Eagle. And how do you do that? If I right click, if I right click on the library header right here and I select open library manager and I go here to available, the ones that have my name, as you could see, are the, are the ones that I have made. These are Eagle PCB are the ones that have been made by our team of librarians. But we also have some other ones that have been made by SparkFun and they make it available through Eagle as you could see here. These are some SparkFun libraries. We have some Seed Studio libraries as well that have been made available by our team as well. Uh, we have Worth Electronics that have made their libraries available as well. And PCB Layout has created many libraries as well that you could use and the only thing you need to do is just click on the library and make put it in use and it will appear on your schematic when you're adding components to your schematic that's all you got to do so you select the library and select use that way you could put it in use okay now <clears throat> okay now i'm going to go ahead and show some other parts that i feel that are really interesting for you to know from the Eagle Control Panel. Other thing is design blocks. We've created many example designs which can be used into your design. It's like having a, a component, but instead of having an actual asset component, it's already a, a sub-circuit. As you can see, we've we uh, Adafruit has contributed a few sub-circuits that you could be you could be adding to your design, as well as SparkFun and Nordic as well has provided us some circuits that we're able to design and you could just go ahead and add these to your design if necessary. Plus our team, we've created many of our own schematics. Some of them do include the circuit board, many of them do not. It's just the schematic portion that we've been adding to it, okay? If you create your own design blocks, they will appear here on this other section called design blocks, not under examples. And here are some design blocks that I have actually customized myself as well, okay? Now, that's about it. That's all I really wanted to cover. Um, if you're just starting brand new with Eagle, those are the areas that you wanna cover the most, so you, you'll be using the most. Now, under libraries, there's one step that I forgot to let you know that you notice this little dot here, <clears throat> and here it's actually in, in gray. If I switch that dot to gray to green, as you could see there is that I'm putting this library in use. In other words, this library will become available when I'm adding components to my schematic. That's what I wanna let you know, okay? Now, if I deselect this option, that library is no longer gonna be seen when I'm in the schematic editor, okay? So I actually have all of the default libraries that come with Eagle. You see I have the green dot there. Those libraries are actually being able to see those libraries. Now let's start on our very first schematic. I'm gonna expand the projects folder that we have here. And I'm gonna go ahead and right here, I'm gonna, use, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna select, I'm gonna create a brand new project. Call this webinar. July 2019. Now that I've created my brand new project, you'll notice that it has a little green dot right next to it because that project automatically becomes my active project. Now that I have a project created, I'm gonna go ahead and do a right click and select new schematic. Okay, and this is what the schematic editor looks like. I'll give you a brief description of what we're looking at. So we have our pull down menu on top, and then we have our action toolbar menu right here, our zoom features, ULPs and scripts, open the library manager, which we actually learn using it from the control panel as well. And here you could actually put other libraries in use if, if necessary as well. And then we have our parameter toolbar menu right here. 
if you were to use any type of simulation capabilities of Eagle, this is the simulation toolbar right here. This is where you're gonna be adding probes, adding spice models to your components, putting your um, voltage probes, your phase probes, and so forth. Okay, this is where this is at. Then on the left-hand toolbar, we have another menu, which as you could see, are subdivided by sections by functionality. Depending on the functionality, they're grouped that way as well. Now, the first thing we wanna do when we're working on a schematic, and I'll, I'll talk about the selection filter in these portions over here on the right-hand side in a minute. But right now, since I'm working on a blank workspace of the schematic editor, there's not much I could do here right now. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add a frame to our schematic. And we're going to add that in the same way that I would actually add any other component to the schematic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on the add command, which is right here, it says add part. You'll notice that there's a little sliver here when I highlight this icon because it actually retains a history of the latest components that I have been using on other projects. None of these I'm gonna be using for today. So I'm just gonna click there. And this is gonna open up the, a list of all the libraries that I currently have made available for my design. This list matches the same list that I showed you in the control panel that had the green dots right next to each library name. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the frames library and they're in alphabetical order. So I'll go down to the F to the frames library. I'll expand that. I'm gonna select one of the frames that I actually wish to use. I'm gonna use this one, which is the frame, which is a letter size frame, and I'm gonna use it in landscape mode. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. When I select this, I'm using the middle mouse button to zoom in and zoom out, okay? I'm using the, the scroll wheel to zoom out. If you're a trackpad person, of course you could use the pinching on your trackpad. I'm using a regular PC mouse on my Mac, okay? As you notice, the component now is attached to my mouse cursor. And in this case, the bottom left corner is actually uh, my handle for this frame. Now you notice that I have a cross hair here. That's the origin of my page, of my design, of my workspace in Eagle. You'll notice that the coordinates right here, you saw my X and Y coordinates let me, letting me know where my mouse cursor is located. You'll see that as I get close to my page origin, it goes to zero, zero, as you can see there. It is preferably a good idea to always work on the positive coordinate when you're working with Eagle. That way, in case you need to create any type of scripting on your design for X or Y reason, you always can work with positive coordinates. Once you start using negative coordinates, using the script will work. It just makes it a little bit harder. So we strongly recommend that you always work on the positive coordinate, on the positive quadrant. I'll go ahead and place the frame that we have there. Now you'll notice I automatically get another one attached to my mouse cursor. I don't need another frame. So I'm gonna hit the escape key once and you're gonna notice what happens. It puts me back to the add dialog box. That way I could select other components. Now for this design, I need a couple of uh, passive parts such as resistors and capacitors. Let's go ahead and do a uh, look for those components that we need. So I'll go ahead and the kind of passive parts, you're gonna find them in a library called the RCL library. As I mentioned earlier, Libraries are actually in alphabetical order. So I'll go down to the RCL library, as you can see here. Here's our RCL library. I'll expand this library. And you'll see that we have European um, format uh, symbols, and we have some US symbols. I'm going to be using US symbols for now. So I need four capacitors for my design. So I'm going to go ahead and expand the library for RUS from the RCL library. Okay. Now, I'm going to use some large parts. So I'm going to use 1206s. So I'm going to use this component right here. As you could see, here's the schematic symbol. Here's the footprint. And this is actually the 3D model is going to be used for that 1206. Don't worry about it. If that's not the right one that you need, you could actually easily switch it later on if you wanted to. 
You can switch it on the schematic if you want to later on. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And you're gonna notice, I'm gonna do a zoom to fit here, zoom to fit. You're gonna notice that it's attached to my mouse cursor. I'll zoom in, I'm using the center mouse button to zoom in. If I use the right mouse button, it rotates in increments of 90 degrees. You could see it on the, uh, on the action toolbar, on the parameter toolbar, as it rotates here as well, as you can see. Use that right mouse key. Okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and place four of these. I'm gonna kind of take an estimation where am I gonna be needing them. Since I actually did this once before, so I'll just add four of these right here. If I don't answer your questions, don't worry about it. I'll get to them, okay? Don't worry about it. I'll be getting to you, all your questions towards the end today, okay? Now that we've added all the components, we've added those resistors, let's go ahead and just add some more parts. Now, I'm gonna need a 555 timer for this design. So I'm gonna hit the escape key. Now, somebody was asking me about how do I find parts in the library? So actually we have some search functions right here down on the bottom here as well as you could see. I could go ahead and type in there, 555. As you could see, I get zero results. Eagle is very specific. So if I tell it I want 555, it's looking for a component that yes has those three characters, 555, that's it, okay? If we wanna expand this search, then I could use wall cards. I could put wall cards on the back, on the front, and I could put a wall card in the back and I could hit enter. Now it's gonna look for the sequence 555, but it's gonna allow it to look for elements that have characters in the front as well as characters in the back. I actually wanna use this one from the linear library, as you can see here. Now you'll notice that I get the linear and I have the 555 timers. Now I have multiple options here. So I have the D series, which is coming in the SO, which is the surface mount version. And I got the N series, which is the through hole version using the DIL08. Okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and use this one that we have here now. <clears throat> I'm gonna click okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it using my right mouse button and you'll see the rotation happening up here. As you can see here. And I will go ahead and I'll use the middle mouse button to mirror it if I wanted to, okay? So I use the right mouse key to rotate it and I use the middle mouse key to mirror it, okay? And the mirroring, you see it here happening right here. It's mirrored on mirrored. As you can see, it's mirrored right now. If I use the middle mouse button again, it mirrors it. If I use it again, I mirror it again. Okay. Now, before I begin getting some more components and defining connections, I'm going to hit escape twice because there's a couple, there's a feature that I would like to show you right now. When you start working in Eagle, the group command is always active by default, as you could see here, it's actually currently active. If I wanted to move all these components, I could just click and drag to define a group. And I could just left click and hold on any of the component origins. That way I can move it as a group, as you could see. Okay. I could select on any of them. I could select on one of these passive parts. As you could see, I could move that as well. Now I could do the same thing and only move two parts, for example. As you could see, it's very useful for when you need to move elements on the schematic as well as on the circuit board is extremely useful. Let's go ahead and continue adding some more components that I'm gonna be needing. Now I'm gonna be using some capacitors for my components. So I'm gonna go back to the add dialog box right here, add parts, as you can see there. And I'm gonna 
get rid of that search. I'm going to clear my search. I'm going to go back to the RCL library that could find some couple capacitors that I'm going to be needing for my design. You know, so R. I'm going to continue using the US style ones. I'm going to, I'm going to use 1206s as well. I'll use the Kemet ones because they're always bigger. I like using bigger parts. Easier to grab with a tweezer because that's why I like them. Now I'm going to go ahead and add two of these, which I need. <clears throat> okay. I think I need it somewhere around here. And around here is where I need it. Lined up with this one. Okay. And now quickly just go grab two LEDs, which I need as well. I'm going to use five millimeter LEDs. I'll go to the LED library. There you go. I'll use this one right here. It's under the LED library, the five millimeter ones. I just need two of these. And I'm gonna be bringing in power using a jumper. So let me just bring in that jumper really quick from the pinhead library. One by two should be enough. Okay, so there's my jumper. And I'm gonna be bringing power here. Now, it, it, please write this down if it's necessary. It's extremely important. I can't stress this enough. When placing components on your schematic, stay with the default grid. The, I just can't tell you enough. This is uh, Eagle chapter one, verse one, however you want to call it. Always stay on the default grid. We strongly recommend that when you're placing components on your schematic or defining connections on the schematic, stay on a 0.1 inch grid, okay? When it comes to working on the circuit board, that doesn't really matter. But working on the schematic, always work on a 0.1 inch grid. All of the components, when it comes to schematic symbols, are created on a 0.1 inch grid. And this is necessary. That way you, we can guarantee that when you're defining your connections in the schematic, they actually get connected. If you deviate from a 0.1 inch grid, there's a really good chance that you're thinking you're connecting your components in the schematic, but when you move to the board, the connections do not appear, okay? Because the components were created on a 0.1 inch grid. All the schematic symbols are built on a 0.1 inch grid. So it's extremely important to always work on a 0.1 inch grid. Now, you may say, why do you give us other options for using other grids? Because graphically, you may have to use smaller grids to maybe import a logo, or you may want to have some graphical drawings done on the schematic to emphasize a particular area of the schematic. So now you have that capability of using a smaller grid for those particular reasons. But for defining connections and placing components, always work on a 0.1 inch grid or the equivalent grid and, and metric. Okay. Now let's go ahead and start co adding connections. Now, when you're adding connections to the schematic, you're not going to use the line or the wire command. That's not the command to use. Okay. Stay away from using that command. The command to be able to define connections is going to be called the net command is this one that we have right here. As you can see it right there, it's the net command. Point 0.1 inch grid is a standard for creating components when it comes to schematic symbols only, okay? It's only for schematic symbols. When it comes to footprints, it, you have to just use whatever grid the manufacturer uses to be able to create that component. But when it comes to schematic symbol, yes, everybody uses, when it comes to Eagle libraries, even third parties, 
the majority of them are using 0.1 inch grids. Remember, Eagle has been around for almost 30 years. So that standard is pretty well known in that industry. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I have selected the net command and I'm gonna start now defining my connections, okay? So as you could see, as I get close to my components, one moment, as I get close to the component using the nets, you can notice that the a little a little um, circle gets formed. That means that I am at the connecting point of that component. Okay, so I'll click there and I'll just zoom out and create this connection really quick. I didn't. Okay, and when I finish and when I when I hit the connecting point, I double click and it ends there. I'll go ahead and define my other connections. Okay, I double click to finish that connection. And then here it goes CB goes. I'm gonna move this component down, that way it connects. I want it to line up perfectly there. I'll add, I'll add my grounds in a minute. Now look what happens when I uh, define a connection and I intersect two line, uh, two nets. When I stop there, I'll get a junction point. That just lets me know that the name of this net and the name of this net is exactly the same name. Okay, that's what that's just letting me know. I'll go ahead and keep on adding my connections that I that are necessary. Now, if you're a brand new user to Eagle, sometimes the connecting point may not make sense where it is, or it may not be easy for you to identify it. So you could actually use the display command, the layer settings icon here, and enable layer 93, as you could see. Oops. As you could see, now I've now I clearly able to display the connecting points because of the bubbles that showed up there as well. Okay. I don't like having that connection because it kind of clutters the schematic. So by default, we actually have it disabled on layer 93. Okay, so let me just quickly finish these, these nets really quick. I'm, I'm using a double click to, um, to finish the net, okay? Click on the net command, my net. I'm gonna do a single left mouse click. Okay, make that connection there. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and, and bring in um, my power pins. So I'm gonna click on the add command and I'm gonna bring in the, all of everything that's gonna be powering up, which is gonna actually gonna be happening through the, through the pin header that I put in. So I'm gonna bring in, uh, I'm gonna use the supply library. Right, here's the supply library. And I'm gonna go ahead and select my, um, my V plus. And I'll put it right here. And I'm gonna bring in my ground. Hit escape and I'll bring in ground. Okay. Let 
let me go ahead and define these connections. Okay. Now, since this is carrying already V plus, and this is V plus, I want to connect V plus to all of my passive parts on the superior part of my design. I could just create a, just select a duplicate here of V plus, and I could just have them connected here. Connect V plus there. Connect V plus there. They get connected automatically. Okay. And now I could actually bring my ground. I'm going to duplicate this here. I'm going to bring in my ground and can rotate it and connect it there. My ground connected there as well. Connect that there. And I'm going to connect ground over here as well. And I'm going to duplicate V plus that way I connect it right here. So the reason I did it this way is that way I don't have to be running a net from the jumper where I'm going to be connecting V plus and my ground to each one of these components. By yes, by yes transferring this symbol to wherever I needed to connect it, these connections will appear on my board layout. So it just saves us having uh, that much more clutter on our schematic. Okay. And then now the only thing I have to connect is, um, my ground, my ground, and I want to connect my reset to to V plus as well. So I'll just go ahead and duplicate this here as well. And now I just use my net command and define that connection we have right there. Okay. <laughs> And that takes care of making my very, very, very first schematic, okay? Connections are all done. Let me just verify that I've done everything that was necessary. Yep, everything is connected appropriately. And uh, in essence, what we've done is that we've used the add command to add our connection, to add our components. We use the net command. And at those points that there is an intersection between the net as between two nets, it automatically acquires this junction point. Okay. Now, how do I set the values for my components? I'm going to now go ahead and select here the value command, and I'm going to click on my component, and I'm going to set this to 1K. Set this one to 470K. Set my capacitor to one microfarad. This one, I think it's pretty negligible, the value I use here. So I just use, use 10 nanofarads. And these, I'm gonna keep them the same because I want the strobing to be of the same intensity and at the same time. So, to 20 ohms and 220 ohms. Okay, and the LEDs are curled. Don't need to put a value there. Okay, and if I wanted to generate a bill of materials from my design, I would just click here. I'm gonna go ahead and save what we've done so far. If I wanted to generate a bomb from this, I would click on File, Export, I would select the option Bill of Materials. As you can see, this is our Bill of Materials based on the schematic. Right now it's by parts, so you'll see that they're all by parts, one at a time. I could categorize it by values, so it summarizes it. So I got two resistors of 220, two LEDs of five millimeters, one LM555, as you could see. So it's now dividing it. I could export this in text format, simple text format, HTML or comma separated values, okay? So or character separated. So you have different formats of how you could export your bill of materials. Now let's say you wanted to 
add some additional information to your components, okay? We call those attributes. Let's say I'm using a particular distributor because I want to add, yes, because I want to be able to make it easier to add it. So I could right click the component and select the option attribute. I could create a brand new attribute and let's say we call this a distributor. And let's give it a value of if the distributor, let's say it's digit key, digit key part one, two, three, for example. I don't want it displayed, but I want that component to have that attribute. Now you see that that component has that attribute. Now, when I save this and I generate my bill of materials, that attribute now has a header right here for distributor and I put digi key right there. So you just make it a lot, make it easier if I needed to fulfill placing an order for these components that way I know what component I actually use on the design and where do I need to order it from, okay? So I just wanted to show you how you could easily, now this could be done in the library. So when you create this component in the library editor in Eagle, you could actually add these attributes. But if you did not have the opportunity to do that in the library, you could actually add those attributes here as well. Now, all the components that I did use already have 3D models assigned to them. But in the schematic editor, you're actually able to assign 3D models to components as well. If I was to right click any of the components, I could click here where it says add custom package. Even though these already have a package assigned to them, let's say I wanted to change it or you were supplied a schematic and you do not have 3D models assigned to it, you could click here on add custom package. This opens up our package editor and in the package editor, you're going to have uh, several options. I could actually either add a model of the ones that we have. I could generate a model and use one of our cookie cutters that we already have our templates. That way you could enter the information to create the component. I could upload a step file if I already have a step file for that component. That way I could sign it that way. Or I could just browse the repository of 3D models that Eagle already has, these are collections that I have. If I select all models, this is a collection that Eagle has put together, the Eagle team and the ones that I have. And I could actually search for components here. Let's say I search for 1206 here, which is, um, these are the elements that I've been using. So I could select the 1206 Kemet. And as you could see, it's that easy to add 3D models to my components directly from the schematic as well. The same steps can be used from the board layout. Well, this is all I wanted to be able to cover today. I went just over the 30 minute limit that I wanted to use that I usually like to use, but this ends my session for how to create and build your very first schematic. Another, another way we have to add some information, as you could see my title here automatically adopts the name of the schematic. Now the, uh, the timestamp automatically, as soon as I save it, it lets me know what sheet I'm, in, locate, I'm using as well. Now the rest of the information here is actually gonna be added using the text command. So let me just add text here. Here's the text command. I'll click okay. As you could see, it's coming up in green, which is the same green as using my symbol on my net layer. I'm gonna change this to the symbol layer and I'm gonna just change it to be a little bit bigger. I'm gonna leave the ratio there and I could just go ahead and place it. Now, as you could see, I'm over a very coarse grid. I could press and hold the Alt key. That way I have a smoother because the Alt key actually switches to an alternate layer. So I'm pressing and holding the Alt key right now. Okay, I will just place it there and I'll select here to stop my session. If I click on the grid command, 
This is my default grid and this is my alternate grid. Okay, I just wanted to bring that up really quick. Now I'll go ahead and answer any questions that you may have. Okay, so let's take a look here. So um, what is the best way to find Eagle device libraries? Um, well, as I showed you already, you could use the add command and use the search options that you have right here. You could search by the attributes. We already, I, you, you should be experts of attributes already. I showed you how to do that. Or you could just use here. I could refine my search by selecting, I only want disable SMD, or you don't want to look in the descriptions. I only want to look for SMD. So here you could filter it. Now remember to use the wildcard, okay? It's important that you do use the wildcard that will look for as many characters in the front of the character of, of whatever you type or on the back. Now you could also use the question mark. The question mark, it's just gonna look for one character after the, the wildcard character. So it would look for five millimeters and one more character. It wouldn't look for many more characters, okay? That's the difference between those, the two between using the wildcard. My preference is usually using the wild card as well. Now I've answered that one live. Let's see, are you able to email participants the schematic PCB you created in the seminar? Sure, yes, e yes go ahead and email me um, because I don't like communicating unless you communicate it with me first. So I'll go ahead and put on the chat my email address, which is support.eagle at autodesk.com. And I'll go ahead and email you the document that I was using to put the schematic together. I'll gladly do that as well. Okay, so that would be great. <clears throat> well, that's done. So you just email me that question. Okay. How did you disable layer 93? Okay, so layer 93 gives you a lot more information to find the connecting point of your pins. So up here where it says, up there, let me see, go here. Layer settings, as you could see here. See, there's a little eyeball right next to it. If I enable it right there, by clicking there, you see I get additional information on my connecting points. If I disable it, so the only thing I did is I toggled it right here. Okay, and if I click OK, they will remain on. If I go back to the layer settings icon and I select 93, and then it will disable them from there. Okay, hope that answers those questions. Next question. <clears throat> Next question is, how do you enable the intersecting lines on your cursor in the schematic editor? Uh, Brian, do, are you referring to the junction points? Can you just clarify? If it's the junction points, basically it's automatically enabled. Um, now, now, as like here, I cross these two lines. This, this, this net and this net are not joined because I just went straight across. If I wanted them to be connected, and then I would actually use this command here called junction, and I would actually place a junction there to create that connection between both of them, okay? Which I don't want in this case, not on this design. But if I wanted to force them to connect, I would manually use the junction command. By default, automatically junctions appear. Now that could be disabled by going to options set. So let me do that one more time. I think I went a little too fast. Options set. If you do not want automatic junctions to appear, option set and go to the miscellaneous tab. And right here is the auto set junctions that we have here. As you could see, you could actually disable that if you wanted to. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, you're talking about the cursor. Oh, okay, very well. If it's the cursor you're referring to, you go to options and go to user interface. And you notice that on the schematic, I have it set to large. If I set it to small, you only get the plus, as you could see. Um, I like using large myself, just because it, it's easier to line up things if I have to line up uh, objects or assets 
it just makes it that much easier to to line up. So I go options set. I'm sorry, wrong place. Options user interface, and I select large and I click there, as you could see. And that's yes, I prefer that. Okay. So let me answer that one. Done. Yeah, well, yeah, there's a lot of libraries that are a lot of components that are not covered in our libraries. And uh, we're aware of that and our librarians are uh, working diligently to to add more parts as well as Eagle does have include a library editor. And that, that will be a webinar down the, down the road here in this month in which we will cover how to create your own components using Eagle. So we'll do that. We'll do that later in the month. Now, <clears throat> If you, as I showed you already, you could go to the library manager, open library manager, and I did this in the beginning. I don't know if you were here, but here on the available tab, we have many libraries that are being um, shared through Eagle from different distributors as well as different outfits. So we have PCB layout. They have many libraries already there. Um, we have Seed Studio, we have SparkFun, we have Adafruit libraries. So you could actually select the library that you, of your interest and just put it in use. Now, beyond this point, if you, there's components that you're looking for, there's a couple of outfits out there that actually provide ECAD library for components, regardless of what program you use. So uh, there's one called Snap EDA. There's another one called samaxis.com, samaxis. Um, and let me see, there's, um, that's about it really. Samaxis and Snap EDA are the ones that come to mind the most that uh, provide libraries. Now, Samaxis, I know it's free. You only need to create an account. It's free. Snap EDA, I think you actually have to have a membership. So you may have to pay for that one if you wanted to use some access. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> How to remove junctions. Basically, the remove the remove junctions, you just use the delete command to remove junctions. So um, but the nets, even if I use the delete command and I remove the junction, you gotta be very careful because even if I remove the junction, this net and this net keep the same name and I'll show you right now. So as you could see, this is called n dollar sign one and this one, oh, and this one actually adopts a different name once I delete, oh, okay, that's something kind of new. So this one is n dollar sign nine and this one it got n dollar sign one. Okay, so yes, by clicking on the delete command, before the nets would not rename. I think that's something rather new. Um, let's verify that one more time. So let's go to the properties here. This is called n dollar sign two, as you could see, and this one we call n dollar sign two as well. Now, if I delete, use the delete command and get rid of that junction. This one is called n dollar sign two. And let's see if this one keeps the same name as well. n dollar sign seven. So just by clicking on the delete command, and you could just click on the junction. Okay. I'm going. I'm trying to go as fast as I can. I'll answer the questions on the chat as well. Just so you just give me a few minutes. Okay. Well, you know, it's actually connect. Uh, so the question is when drawing a net line, how do you know C it's actually connected to the part? Well, it because it's it's it snaps to it is what happens. As you could see, let me just do one of the simple connections. So we'll do this one down here really quick. As you could see, let me just delete that one. I'll select the net command. I'll zoom in some here. As you could see, you see, as it, it turns into a bubble, I just single left click there. And as I move my connection, you see when I, if I double click that bubble right there, it's connected. Now, if you wanna verify this connection because you're maybe new to Eagle or something like that, and you just wanna make sure it's connected. If I click on the move command and I move this component, you'll notice that the net moves with it. 
that guarantee, let's guarantees to you that that is connected as you could see. See, the net moves with it. That net moves with it, it is connected, okay? If I just grab this component here and I move it, as you could see, all the nets move with it. It kind of turns into a rubber band that guarantees that connection, okay? Um, question is, how to identify differential pairs in a high pin counts? More than 200 pins, it mentions in the data sheet. Do I have any examples? I, I don't really cover that example here. Um, um, so in the schematic, it, we don't have a way of identifying the pairs. In, in essence, a, a pair in Eagle is, it has the same name. So let's say, let me just, just grab a couple components here. Let me just uh, copy this component really quick. We're way off the topic there, but it's a valid question though. Let me just duplicate this component. I duplicated the So I'll do net. As you could see, you could type your commands if you want to. If you're not really interested in using the the icons, you could actually type the on the command line. This is the command line right there. You could type your commands as well. Now, in differential pairs, the, the what happens is that the name of my net are exactly the same. So here, let's say I call this uh, example underscore P for positive. And this one, I call it yeah, underscore N. Okay, now this is my differential pair, okay? Um, label. So there's that one and there's this one. So now when I work with this on in Eagle, when I, when I go to work with this in, in the board layout, this is my differential pair, okay? So what I always recommend is that if you do have differential pairs, use the label command, that way you could easily identify them. Now in the schema, once you're on the board layout editor, when I route differential pairs, they do actually highlight, which is kind of nice. They will highlight, but that's on the circuit board side. On the schematic side, they use by their name, okay? Um, is there a possible to draw inter digital capacitor patterns on the board layout. We'll, we'll reach that when we go to the board layout section, okay? Is there a vertical and horizontal line options for aligning multiple components? On the schematic editor, yes, there is, it's right here. So you could actually select the components. Um, let me see if I could do this really quick. Yes, there is, so you could actually Let's say I selected these components like this. See if this I could get this to work here. I could define my group. Okay, and I could go here to my inspector. Uh, and you should be able to do this. Oop, um, Okay, and I let's say I want to ass assign align them to the left, for example, um, align them to the middle, to the right, and you just gotta you use this this tool here for align aligning them. Okay, and this is how that works um, on the inspector. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think they're going to be aligned. Oh, you know what? I should have done a selection filter. I should have selected only components. Mm -hmm. Table line module instance. No, I don't want modules. I want components. part. I only want to select my parts. I only want to select parts. That's it. And then now I could go to the inspector and I could use the align tool right here, as you could see. 
So with the selection filter, I'm able to tell it that I only want to select my components and then I could go to the inspector and I could use the alignment tool right there. Okay, this is a really quick example, but if you have multiple components, like 20 or 30 LEDs, it makes it really easy, okay? So that's one tool. Is there a list of Eagle schematic text commands? And yeah, you could type the, uh, the, the help command. Um, you could go to help. And in help, there's here are all the commands that you could see here, the editor commands you could see here. Also, I wanted to let you know how you could access help. Here, there's help documentation. This will automatically open up your, your finder. Sorry, I have two screens, so it opened it up on the other screen that I have over here. Okay, and when you click on help documentation, it will open up to this folder right here under Eagle Docs. And here's the manual. It's the, man, the manual is available in German as well as in English. We have the tutorial that is actually available. If you um, about different layer setups, if you have a multi-layer setup, and so forth. this is documentation here. Or also, you could just type the command help. And let's say you want help on attributes, you could just type attrib, and it will bring up that help. You could use that from the command line as well. Okay. Um, No, we, we, I don't think we have a command line um, kind of breakdown on the website. You would access that from the manual. On the manual, there's a chapter just dedicated to the command lines. It's on the appendix of the manual. So just access the manual from here, as I showed you earlier, and you could get it from there, okay? Now, let me go over to the chat. Well, that's a really tricky question, Joel. So Joel's asking me, how can we know which library has the components we need? Well, that's a really tricky question. First of all, you could actually browse the components from the library, um, from the control panel. That way you could take a look at the content of the library. There is a search function here as well. You could sort it, um, you could search the tree. You could do this from the control panel. We've done our best to do them by manufacturer as well as by functionality. As you could see, we have Atmel, Sparkfun, Allegro. Um, even though Sparkfun is more of a distributor, they're not made by them. But as you could see, we we do our best to have them categorized by by functionality is basically what we try to do. Even if it's a distributor, a manufacturer will put the distributor, I'm sorry, the manufacturer name and the function that it's actually gonna do. So we do our best to do it that way. But your best bet is when you use the add command to use the search function that we have there. That would be the best way. Okay, so it takes a, okay. <laughs> Thanks for the comment on the alignment tool. It works really well, especially on the schematic, okay? Uh, Okay, ultra, oh, okay. Somebody's actually also doing the comment about ultra librarian to be able to get Eagle components. That's actually another source for getting. And um, so uh, I wanted to actually some access, some access.com as well and um, snap EDA. Now remember that I think Snap EDA, there's some sort of a membership and both of them are gonna, are gonna require that you create an account. So just be warned about that, okay? Okay. On Thursday, the webinar is gonna cover mainly about a uh, PC board layout editor, okay? We're gonna cover that portion. We're only gonna be doing PCB. Okay, how do you change the orientation of the sheet? Well, basically, it, you don't really change the orientation. What you do is that you select a, a different sheet. So this sheet, I actually selected landscape. So if you did the add command, window. Sorry about that. 
what you would do is that you would do the add command again and go to the frames library. You would go to the frames library here and then you see I, I selected landscape. What you would do is that you would select a frame that would be portrait is basically what you would do. So, and we do have some here. So here, here's a portrait one, as you could see, and there it is right there. So you would select that one if you wanted a, a portrait one. But I usually just work in landscape. It's uncommon that you see anything else. That's why I went with that one, okay? Now, if you wanna take this one and turn it around, I don't really recommend it because the information box becomes um, kind of strange to work with, but you can just click on the click on it as you could see. I could flip it around and then I, I would have to make sure that I move this as well. <laughs> and since I put that with text, so it gets, you know, you, you could, you could kind of work it from here as well if you wanted to. I guess you could do something like this and move these things around a little bit. I'm pressing and hitting the pressing and holding the alt key just to make it a, easier for me to move around. And oh, I got my selection filter. I got to reset it. Okay. My selection filter, I had it only for components. So that's why I was giving you a hard time to grab this part. Um, you could do, I guess you could do something like that. Um, I would just grab a, a frames because it, it loses the orientation for the text, okay. Uh, is differential pins mentioned in data sheet of ICs, which two pins are differential pairs? No, not really actually. Differential pair is an effect that you usually need to use um, on the design itself. So you you determine which ones are usually have to be done as a differential pair. So it's not necessarily uh, provided by the component. No, not necessarily, no, it's not, okay. Um, so let me see if there are any other questions. Okay, I have design in another software which can produce Gerber file, but when I import the Gerber file, yeah, importing Gerber files, you gotta make sure that they're in 274X, but remember when you import Gerber files in the Eagle, you're not importing the actual design. It's kind of a, uh, it's, it's, it's just importing shapes. Um, it's just, it's importing little shapes. So some of them might be pixels and lines. Or, so it doesn't identify that that's a resistor, a capacitor, an inductor. It doesn't identify the component itself. It's just bringing in shapes. So you should only be importing Gerber files for the intent and purposes for using them as a guideline for your design. If you need to really be able to edit the Gerber file to export a different Gerber file, I strongly recommend then that you consider using a Gerber viewer with editing capabilities. Um, Eagle, Eagle's import Gerber files, it's just for assisting you uh, on how to set up the design you're gonna do. Um, it's not really meant to, we're not really a Gerber viewer with editing capabilities. It's just to give you all an idea, okay? If I add 3D model, does it reflect on the layout? Well, the 3D models, it, it it will, the 3D model assigned to the component will will show up on the board layout, but not in 3D. Everything is gonna be in 2D. It's if you push your board to a step file, the 3D model will show up there. Or if you use Fusion 360, which is uh, another Autodesk product, a mechanical tool, a very good mechanical tool. And then the 3D model will show up there. That way you have a really nice workflow between Eagle and Fusion 360. If you use that workflow, you do not have to convert files because Fusion 360 will recognize the 3D models that are assigned the components in Eagle. It's kind of nice that way, so. Are schematics mandatory to build a PCB or can we, in, um, well, they're not mandatory, no. So if you wanted to go ahead and you start placing uh, assets to your board layout, you know, grabbing components, uh, dills, dips, SOTs, whatever components that you need on your board, yes. And then you you would, I strongly recommend that you use the signal command to define your connections. You're gonna be using the signal command once you've created your signals and then you go back and use the route command to start routing those components, okay? So you're gonna be using the route command. And I, I will I will answer more of that on Thursday. 
when we're working on the PCB. So it's not 100% necessary, okay? Now, would I ever start a project without a schematic? It would have to be something really small, or maybe let's say you're just doing an extension, an extension board in which I'm connecting pin one to pin two, you know, pin one to pin one, pin one, pin two to pin two, something like something really simple. But if it has to have some level of complexity, even if it's a small amount of components, I strongly recommend you start with a schematic. Strongly, strongly recommend that you start, always start with a schematic, okay? Yeah, so on Thursdays, I usually do the PCB layout. And I think that's this following Thursday, yes. Okay, <laughs> be safe at Earthquake County Cliff. Thank you for the comments, greatly appreciate it. Can we edit a reference schematic? If it was, if the schematic was created in Eagle, absolutely, you could take the schematic and edit it. If it's a schematic not done in Eagle, you will not be able to load it in Eagle. As long as you could load the schematic in Eagle, and then it's editable. Absolutely. Even if there's a board layout attached to it, as long as there's synchronization between the board and the schematic. Okay. Okay. So. Um, Okay, I will I will be posting the recordings on our on our YouTube channel. Just look up out of this eagle. Thank you for joining us. I greatly appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. Great questions by everybody. And this was a really nice session that we had. So um, please join me the next time. Okay, looking forward, and I will have that recording as soon as possible for our marketing team. Have a great day, everybody. Oh wait, okay, I answered all those questions as well. I will try to post this one by early next week as well as the other one, okay? Thank you. Hey, thanks for those great comments. Wow, <laughs> those are really nice comments. Greatly appreciate it. We had a really full class too. This was awesome. It was really packed. So that's really nice, okay? And um, I usually try to, I'll log in a little earlier on Thursday. So if you have any questions from today, I'll try to cover those before we actually start, okay? Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.